Hello there, and welcome aboard another episode of Rule the Waves 2 as Great Britain. The year is 1944, and we have just embarked upon a massive new naval building program. With our uh, very large monthly budget, we have begun construction of three amazing new Unicorn-class carriers. I'm pretty sure I'm not supposed to be able to build carriers this big right now, but I'm not objecting. They're building, so we'll go with that. Uh, we also have some new destroyers rocking 5-inch uh, guns as opposed to our previous 4-inch uh, guns, so that's a decent step up in firepower there. But otherwise, basically the same. Now I just need to produce a whole bunch of them. So we're going to be going probably in batches of 4 every uh, 4 to 6 months to keep up a rolling production of these ships. However, uh... Our current objective, I still have a fair bit of monthly balance left, so we need, and we also need some new cruisers. Specifically, we need more light cruisers to make up for our losses in the last war. So let's take a look at that and see what we can get. Alright, so we'll pull that up. Light cruiser design here. Auto design. And, hmm, let's see what they came up with. All right. Well, I can already see a few issues. Uh, it's a little bit on the fast side, lacking armor protection, lacking secondaries, and lacking effective primaries. All right, let's see what we can do here. So, first things first. I do like the number of secondary guns we've got. That is very good. But we want autoloaders. And autoloaders, oh boy, do those things eat their ammunition. So we need a lot of rounds per gun on this. So we'll just crank that up to 200 right there. Okay, next thing. This is a relatively large and expensive fleet unit. So we are putting on unit machinery. And honestly, a ship of this size, probably worth having some torpedo defense as well. So let's see about that. There we go, a little bit of torpedo defense too. Hmm. All right. I think we'll just crank this up to the maximum allowed displacement, 10,000 tons. There we go. Yeah, currently got some weight issues. Let's see if we can go over that. Oh, I guess we can go bigger. Let's see if we can do that. Huh. Weird. I didn't know we could build cruisers this big, but apparently we can. So let's see what else we want. Okay, so this is definitely a light cruiser. Supposed to be in the screening formations. I don't think they'll be operating independently quite as often as the heavy cruisers will. So I'm not entirely sure if these boys need uh, aircraft or not. We'll decide that later. For now, hmm. All right, let's take a look at this. So I do like the torpedoes. That's very nice. Um, I would prefer to have torpedo reloads, especially because we only have one set of launchers per side. So if we throw on reloads there, that should improve their effectiveness. Do I really need four A directors though? That I'm not so sure about. Hmm. How much difference is it making? All right, so with four of them, we currently have a heavy A factor of 20. We shave two of those things off, and we go down to a heavy A factor of 16. Hmm. All right, I still don't think we need 32 knot speed. 30 is plenty. And oh my, look at all that weight savings. Let's start shaving off some of that. Okay, so with all that weight savings, we we're coming in at a nice round 10,000 tons. That's a decent step up. Let's see, is there anything else we can do with this? 
Well, can I add another gun turret? Let's see. I don't think Q is such a good idea. But maybe an R? Well, that fits. That is a lot of firepower. One, two, three, four, five, six inch guns. With autoloader as well. Oh boy, we'll be throwing a lot of lead. Hmm. Honestly, I probably want a few more secondaries as well. Oh wow. Let's see, so 8 secondaries, 73 tons, 10 secondaries pumps us down to 37, but that puts us right back up to a heavy A factor of 20. What if I were to do 2 A directors? Yeah, so we're actually getting more value from the... Uh, Secondary guns. There we go. Yeah, honestly, that's a much better value overall. I do think I want to relocate these torpedo tubes. So let's try those. Oh, nope. Not those. Okay, it wasn't the first two. Let's go with the second two. No. Third batch. One, two. There we go. That's where I wanted those. Okay, so we've got three torpedoes per side with reloads. It's pretty good. We're rocking a nice set of uh, six inch dual purpose, or sorry, not dual purpose guns. Could probably squeeze on some more secondaries if I started playing in games with the armor. But I'm not sure if I actually want to do that or not. Just out of curiosity, let's see what our performances. Yeah, we actually have protection against 6-inch guns. I am impressed. Uh 2.5-inch deck, that's also protection against 8-inch uh, guns at some ranges. Yeah, let's do a quick double check. Yeah, that provides protection... Let's see, what about 10 inch? Okay, so 10 inch guns do reach out far enough that you would need that uh, two and a half inch deck. But honestly, I'm not gonna worry about that too much. I don't think I need a two and a half inch deck. Not on a light cruiser like this. So we'll drop that down and that is additional weight savings that we can pour into secondaries. And a director's as well. That's another good value there. Yeah, look at that go up. Okay. At this point, whew, that is quite the value. 39 up to 44. 44 to 49, that's another five. 49 to 55. Wow. That is a lot of anti-aircraft value in one spot. I am impressed with that. Let's see. Is this okay? All right. Insufficient topside space, which does make sense. We put a lot of heavy AA. All right. So we need to start shaving off some of this stuff. Let's see. Light A first.
All right. There we go. That locked in the AA positions. Decent number of light AA, medium AA, all sorts of uh, heavy AA, so that should be able to do a lot of damage there. And then, oh, hang on. It unchecks the autoloader. Let's fix that. There we go. All right. Yeah, autoloader is a hugely important technology as far as these guns are concerned. Oh, I remember why it unchecked that. It's because I went up to larger calibers, which don't have autoloaders yet. Oh, silly me. All right, uh, that is fixed. We do still have a little bit of weight remaining. We already have the final generation of fire control. So there's no more improvements that we can do there. Let's see, 129 weight remaining. Can we do an aircraft? Yes, we can. Can we do a catapult? We can. Oh, but that does mess with things. Okay. So we're going to pass on the aircraft. I don't think it's worth it. And these will be operating almost entirely with other cruisers and usually part of a major formation that will have aircraft anyway. Whew, sorry about that. Uh, allergies are acting up recently. Figured you guys didn't want to listen to the uh, side effects of that. All right, back to what we were doing. So we have five main turrets. We have a very effective armor belt. Actually, can I push that up any higher? Let's see, three inch armor belt. Ship is slightly overweight, okay. But it's okay with that. Interesting, what about 3.5? Okay, that re-identifies as heavy cruiser. Okay, so with that in mind, let's put that back down to three inches. So we're a little bit overweight, 52. I can't quite make that up with mines. That's not quite enough to make the difference. All right, so... Well, there goes my heavy AA factor. But that puts us in range, and that gives us a very solid belt. Let's see how our performance is. Oh, yeah. That's extending our uh, protection range. And then, reminder, check the autoloader again, but let's see how she does against 8-inch guns. Oh, not quite. It is enough to provide some protection at the uh, intermediate ranges. So right around the longer ranges, I do think we'll have at least some protection at some angles. So we go back down to six inch guns and we're completely immune at up to 10,000 yards. But yeah, in our expected engagement range, uh, I would expect engagement ranges of about 15,000 to 12,000. So let's see how that was doing again. Yeah, 15 down to 12. So we'll definitely have some resistance. We'll definitely be bouncing some shells at the 15,000 yard range. The 12,000 yard range, I can't guarantee it, but there's still a chance. And certainly anything that hits the uh, deck will bounce right off. All right, so we'll drop that back down to six. Auto loader. Let's see. Man, I really want that extra stuff. And I really, really want the uh, 24, but I don't think I can shave off enough medium and light to make it worthwhile. But I can, I think, manage the 22. 
So let's see. Well, there we go. All right, that is rounded out. Okay. One last major change. Gotta relocate some of these smokestacks. Just a minor visual improvement there. There we go. So those are properly set. And then we've got that thing. Hmm. No, nope, not messing around with that. There we go, that's the one. I want that just a little bit further aft so that it doesn't mess with the uh doesn't mess with the gun barrels. So let's redraw that real quick. Let's see, we go there, 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 and we'll call that good. Now from a real ship designer's standpoint, that entire structure right there, tiny little box, would be absurd because it would be blocking the astern firing arc of that turret. So there, there's absolutely no real world reason to have such a uh, structure. But since the game only allows you to have two super firing turrets in each direction, we gotta have some sort of excuse, so we'll go with that. I do think I want it a little bit wider though, so let's try that one more time. Yep, this one. I go down this way. Ugh, it looks fat. One more try. There we go. That looks better. Decent sized little deck house there. Okay, and then we need some sort of name for these. Hmm. I have no idea what I'm going to name these. Let's see what my naming list says. Alrighty, a quick reference to my naming list. And we have a winner. So, uh, I have an extensive list of various... Uh, short-ranged melee type weapons, and I think the winner for this class is rather obvious given its uh, particular unique feature, the quantity and quality of weapons. So we are calling this the Dakar, which is some foreign language for dagger, but I have a whole bunch of other uh, bladed weapon names to go with as well. So we're going to call it the Dakar class. And let's save that and start developing. All right. Off she goes. And we're going to want probably six to ten of these, depending upon budget. We'll see. For now. Actually, hey, that reminds me. The Juggernauts have finished their refits. Which means it's time to drag these next ships in for their rebuilds. Alright, so we'll take the Indivisible and Ineluctable in first. And basically the only thing these guys really need is an upgrade to the Electro-Optical Director. So we'll plunk that thing right in there. We'll shave off a couple of those. And there we go. Good to go. Save that, and begin the rebuild. That's a one. We're doing the same thing with the ineluctable. We're going for the electro-optical director. Shave off a few light AAs. Save. And rebuild. Okay. Oh, 
No, I guess we weren't supposed to build cruisers that size. There we go. Shut that up and moving right along. Okay, Italy wants to buy technology. I am always fine with that. Rebellion continues. Anything else? Whoa. Japan is refitting the Yakumo with electro-optical director. Didn't we, like, only just research that? Oh, bloody thieves. They must have stolen it from us. Alright, looks like our uh, battleships have arrived in the general area. So hopefully that'll be dealing with the issue soon. And getting that uh, rebellion properly crushed. I think three cruisers and a battleship should be able to handle it just fine. Yeah, I think that'll handle things. Okay. How much longer do we have on the development? One more turn. All right, next turn. Oh. Well, that's interesting. The government is considering granting independence to Yemen. Does the Navy have any objections? Honestly, I don't particularly care about Yemen. It's not in a strategic area. It's not any vital base. So sure, sounds good to me. If that means less foreign station requirements, I am fine. Yeah, look at that. Spy from Germany discovered. How dare they? Ooh, wow, would you look at that. Large diesel engines. Not something that I intend to particularly use on my ships, since the diesel engines are only really useful in long-range and extreme-range ships, where you actually get the weight savings from it. But since we don't particularly need anything more than medium-range, I don't see any particular concern for that. So, that's cool. We've got some additional engine technology, but I don't particularly see any need for this. We have bases all over the place, so there's plenty of uh, chances for refueling. Alright, our scientists are well on their way to understanding quintuple torpedo tube mount. Interesting. New fighter developed. Alright, and short company has developed a medium bomber as a private venture. Let's take a look. Okay, so here we go, the short bow fighter. Okay, decent step up in speed. Pretty solid step up in range as well. Okay, pretty good, pretty good. Um, firepower unchanged, maneuverability stepped up. Toughness, eh, minor reduction, payload identical. You know what, we'll take it. It's a decent set. All right, the cruiser Dakar is ready for construction. All right. All right, so we'll start off with that. We'll start off with one of them. Okay, next one, according to my list, uh, this one was supposed to be the, oh my, uh, yeah, we'll go with that one. The, the Asagai, a uh, short little stabbing spear from Zululand. All right, there we go. Let's see, and I saw somebody had finished their working up, so let's fix that. And those guys can go into reserve as well. There we go. Oh yeah, and these guys definitely do not need to be active fleet right now. We can reserve fleet those two. All 
Okay. And we have budget for more. So let's get a third Dakar class cruiser. And this one, uh, let's see, let's see. According to my list, the next appropriate name would be the, uh, let's see, let's see, I got a few options in here, and I am not sure which one I want, so, eeny, meeny, miny, mo, kukri, there we go, that seems pretty good, and we can afford another one, so let's do that as well. And this one shall be uh, we'll go for that one. The Bardiche. All right. There we go. That's taken care of most of our budget for now. And once those uh, eye boats are out, we can refit the next two eye boats and then we'll move on to the Iron Dukes. And then after that, we can start working through our uh, heavy cruisers. Since we really do need to get Electro Optical Director onto all of our cruisers. That is a pretty significant development there. Oh, oh, actually, that reminds me. I also need to get the uh, light cruisers as well. The Pandoras, the Conquests, the Proserpines. Heck, all of them need fire control upgrades. Oh, boy. That ain't going to be cheap. All right. But for now, moving on. Yep, there we go. Spy from Japan has been discovered. There's that pest. How dare they? Oh, our scientists are currently baffled by the problems of base fuses. Huh. That's a weird report. I thought we were all done with that uh, category. Let's see. Alright, yeah, there we go. Base fuses is definitely a category that we don't particularly care about anymore. Because we have already researched everything in the explosive shells category. So it's already been reduced to minimum research. So I guess the game just hasn't recognized that we have researched everything already. And it's still making progress on stuff that we've already researched once. And giving us random messages like that. Well, I guess that happens when you're getting close to the end of the game. All right. Wow. Monthly bounce has gone up again. I don't know what to do with this. All right, let's start off by updating all the Pandoras. All right, so we'll grab those. We'll slap in an electro optical director. Actually, am I able to do auto loaders? Okay. Well, the ship is a little bit overweight now, but. Let's see, is there anything we can do about that? If I ditch the torpedoes, we're still a little bit over. Man, I would love to have auto loaders on these things though. Let's see, what else can I afford to ditch? Well, I guess that'll have to work. Because that puts us right in there. Alright. Wow, this isn't exactly... Actually, that is remarkably cheap, all things considered. Yeah, that's practically no change at all. Ah, getting those auto loaders. Actually, does that change... Crew complement? No, it doesn't. That's a little weird. You know, you'd figure having 
a purely automated loading mechanism would reduce the crew complement and therefore your maintenance. But uh, no, I guess not. Oh well. Alright, but that's a nice step up there. We're getting our electro-optical directors and we're getting auto-loaders. So we'll take that and we're going to rebuild all of these. Ah, there we go. Hi. And next turn. Okay, France is interested in buying technology. Yep, yeah, I'm fine with that. Okay, scientists are tantalizingly close to inventing improved welding. Oh, and there we go. That's significant. Cavity magnetron increases radar range. Search radar 3. Fantastic. And that's also bumping out the range of our uh, fire control radar as well. We still don't have indirect fire, or a correction, blind fire capability. That's uh, fire control radar too. But having a longer rate reach search radar means that we are gaining the benefits of fire control out to the uh, quite a bit of range there. Now, I have no idea what on earth a cavity magnetron is. That sounds like some super fancy electrical whiz-bang thing. Which I probably should know about, given that I do actually work on electromechanical stuff in the Navy, but it's also a rather old technology compared to modern day stuff, so who knows, maybe I can find it in a tech manual somewhere. But that is a problem for the future, for now, we need to keep pushing things forward. All right, we finished rebuilds on a couple of these battle cruisers, so we're gonna throw these back into mothballs, and let's get the next batch of battle cruisers rebuilding. All right, electro optical director, who ya? Yeah. And there we go. I think that's good. Alrighty. And there we go. Off they go. I haven't actually seen any word about the rebellion. I guess the uh, ships we sent are doing their job. What are you guys doing on active fleet? You guys should not be on active fleet if you're just hanging out in Northern Europe. We'll plunk you guys down on mothballs for now. Yeah, Northern Europe. North. Mothball that too. Okay, that covers all of our comuses. All right, looks good. Next turn. Ooh, currently baffled by the problems of improved welding. Ooh, fleet tactics technology. Ooh, circular AA screen. Allows battleships to screen carriers. Hmm. How ironic. Early on, the carrier was a support for the battleship. And now it's the other way around. Hopefully that means the battle generator doesn't do anything dumb. Like having the juggernauts escorting the carriers. While smaller forces move out front. Oh my... Speaking of which, I should probably pay attention to my uh, aircraft types as well. Let's see. Quick check of air groups. Okay. Looks like the uh, air wings have been a little bit goofed. Let's see. I do believe it is safe to put all of our air stations on reserve. And we need aircraft for the triumphant. 
Okay, let's see. So we've been going with a 2-2 two, two layout so far. All right, well, let's do it. Oh, come on. Yeah, yeah, I said, I said active, yeah. There we go, add aircraft. That's what I was looking for, okay. So we want fighters, 20, looks good. Let's add another one. Fighter, 20, yep. And then we'll add a third. That's gonna be torpedo bombers. And we're gonna add a fourth, and that's also gonna be torpedo bombers. Hooray. There we go. All right, and hopefully they'll be able to work their way up pretty quickly. Okay. Now oh, that's taken care of. Let's see, actually, quick review here. Oh man, look at that maintenance costs. Okay, that is a huge amount of maintenance costs for a very small aircraft complement. I do believe that these early conversion carriers are going to have to get retired. They have done fantastic service, but I think as the uh, new unicorn class roll out, we're going to be retiring the older ones. Now, I know that's not great in terms of overall uh flight decks available. I think the new ones are so much more capable that I think it's worthwhile. Okay. So that's all pretty well set. And... Let's see. What else can we do here? I have more budget. And that means... Oh yes! Time for more destroyers. There we go. More destroyers. What are you complaining about? Scientists are currently baffled by the problems of air sea rescue and CIC. Ooh. Well, that's good. At least we're working on them. Oh my goodness. Anti-ship missiles. Oh my goodness, we have anti-ship missiles. Hmm. All right, let's see what we can do with these. So if I go down here and I design me a destroyer, let's see what I can do with that. Hmm. All right, here we go. Missile launchers. What? What do you mean has not invented ship-mounted missiles? We just got anti-ship missiles. Yeah, right there, see? Hmm. Weird. All right. Well, with tensions rising, our budget is going up, so Russia is not too happy with me. And that, actually, let's take a look and see what Russia's got. Okay, so they do have some battleships. They're not that big though, so I'm not too worried about it. They do have a few battle cruisers as well. Again, not hugely worried about it. They do have carriers, more under construction, and a decent number of CVLs as well. But I think the big thing is they've got heavy cruisers. So that's gonna be the area that I expect a fair bit of content competition, which means 
we need to start upgrading fire control and other stuff on these. So we'll take these Ariadnes and we're going to throw in the electro optical director. We're going to take that. And we're going to shave off a couple of light A's. And I think that looks good. Yeah, we'll call that good. All right, let's rebuild those. Off you go. Okay, and then we also need to get these other heavy cruisers re-equipped as well. So we've got these Endeavors. Which are already slightly overweight. And we plop down some more weight. <laughs> All right. Oh, that's a lot of light, eh? We can probably shift the focus of that around a little bit. Drop that down to 10. And 12. All right. That's actually well-rounded. And look at that. Perfect zero weight remaining. I wish I knew why it's not letting me do ship missiles. It totally should be. Huh. Weird. Well, we'll have to do some research onto that. But for now... Let's save these and send them off for rebuilds. And we'll do the same thing for these Andromedas. Again, jumping straight up to electro -optical. And again, I think we want to redistribute these uh, AA guns. Let's see, so we've got a heavy A factor of 25. What do we get from an extra? 29? Yeah, I don't think that's worth it. But some extra medium certainly wouldn't hurt. Could I do 12? Yeah. 9, 12, 1A director. And electro-optical director. I think that'll work. All right, so we'll save that. And off you go. Okay, we'll call that good. Oh, we got the Pandora's back. Throw those in reserve. Looking good. Do we still have that rebellion going on? Yeah, it's still rebelling. Okay. So that is still a concern. Comuses are doing fine. Let's see about these conquests. What can I do with these? Wow, that is a lot of ammunition there. So first of all, we need that electro-optical director. And let's see. Auto loader. That was a bit much. So I don't think these guys can pull off the auto loader. Even though they're actually relatively well set for it based on the uh, rounds per gun. Hmm. But I think we'll be better off just shaving off a little bit of weight there. Actually, that reminds me, uh, this ship had issues with launching torpedoes at high speed. So let's see about shifting around our torpedoes. Let's see, am I able to do a centerline mount? 
Well, apparently the answer is yes. Or just severely overweight. So if we drop that down to a single tube. <laughs> oh my, a single tube. Yeah, that's not really worth it. What about without the reloads? Hmm. Nope, let's try that one more time. So all we really need Electro-optical director, and a little bit of weight savings. It, uh, it isn't great, but it'll do. And these are definitely second line cruisers. They're purely there for mine laying capacity. But since they might get in a scrap because they're in the dangerous regions, might as well give them good fire control. Okay. Off you go. We'll call that good. Alrighty, let's see. What do we got left? So we've got battle cruisers. We've got heavy cruisers being rebuilt. Fantastic. Gonna have to get this guy rebuilt as well. Oh, good. Looks like the uh, radars are already being equipped. Let's see. We've got four... Cruisers, four light cruisers. We're going to have three heavy cruisers. I think I want another heavy cruiser as well. What are you complaining about? Yes, I know I probably violated some of my displacement rules. Come on. Any moment now. There we go. Alrighty, so France wants to buy technology. Hmm. Are they a threat? Not hugely so. I don't know how to build battleships. Those things are very sad. Their battle cruisers are probably pretty old as well. They do have a decent number of carriers. But uh, even with their additional construction, I don't think it's going to make much difference. So you know what? Sure. We'll do it. Okay. Nothing too significant here. Next turn. Oh boy. Well, that could get old very quickly. Battle Cruiser Imponderable has finished a reconstruction. Oh my. France holds a belligerent speech. Oh, I guess they're getting up to their old tricks again. Ooh, improved ASW tactics. Better chance of killing submarines. Fantastic. And here we have improved light and medium AA. I didn't know they had gyroscopic skites for those. The only gyroscopic sights that I was familiar with was the uh, gun sights they used on World War II fighters. And even those are pretty rare, but and I guess it makes sense. If you can put it in an airplane, you can very easily put it on a ship. So, sure. And the basic idea behind gyroscopic sights is if you are moving the gun at a certain speed and you know how far away the target is, then the gyroscopic sight can automatically move the reticle that you're using to aim 
so that uh, you just have to put the reticle over the target and it's already calculating lead for you. That is dependent upon knowing two things though. You gotta know how fast you are tracking your opponent so you get an idea of how fast they're moving. And then the other factor, and this is probably the most important one, is knowing how far away the enemy is. That's the trick. Now on a fighter plane, that's pretty easy. You just set the uh, estimated range at whatever your gun convergence is set at, so when they're in the sweet spot, you get a hit. And all you have to do is just put the reticle over them. On a ship, I don't know, that might not be so easy. Then again, on second thought, we also have our AA directors, and we also have a uh, radar. So, I guess we can just take that information straight from the uh, directors. Or even have the uh, radar doing the thing for us. So, sure, gyroscopic sights on light and medium AA. We'll take it. Whoa. What? The rebels in Western Australia have defeated British forces... They've declared independence. Oh my. Curse you, ship that shall not be named. Your crew are haunting me even beyond the grave. All right. Well, we're over 50 minutes in, so I guess we'll have to call this episode to a close here. Until next time, Katori87, signing out.